Hello, David here, and welcome to the basics of robotics. Let's begin by going through the basic motion types. There is PTP or point-to-point -point motion and linear motion, referred to as LIN in the user interface. With PTP, the target position, speed and acceleration are controlled in joint space. So for the robot to reach the target position, joints do as little work as possible. So in this case, only the first axis was moving, but the tool center point, or TCP, draws an arc in the Cartesian space. With linear motion, position, speed and acceleration are controlled in Cartesian space. So for the same target with linear motion, the TCP draws a straight line, but the joints do more work. So in this case, all joints, except for joint 4, are moving. Usually, you would use PTP for coarse motions, while linear motion would be used for fine approaches and process motions. One difference between the motions is that with PTP, it's possible to change the robot configuration, whereas with linear motion, the configuration is retained. So in this case, it's possible to change the configuration from a no flip to a flip configuration, and you can see the wrist changing the configuration with PTP. In your robot programs, you should always start with a PTP motion. And now let's talk about robot base and tool frames. Base and tool frames are important concepts to understand the positioning of your robot. A tool frame sets the location for the tool center point or TCP. In this illustration, it's the yellow arrow from the robot flange to the end of the welding gun, where the TCP is located. A base frame is the reference frame for positioning the TCP. By default, it's at the robot world frame but you can move it, for example, to the corner of a workpiece or fixture. And now, when you program positions, the target position matrix will be the transformation from the base frame to the TCP location. And together, the chain of base, target and tool form this combined transformation called robot illustrated here. And that transformation is passed to the robot kinematics to solve the joint values for this given TCP position. In visual components, you can set the active base and tool frames in the jog panel. And you can modify the frames by clicking the gear icon next to the frame. When you modify the frame, you can set its location and you can also set the parent node to be some simulation component or node in the layout. So setting the parent for a frame attaches the frame to certain components in the layout. Visual components robots usually have 16 built-in base and tool frames, but you can also import frames from attached components via the interface behaviors for tool and robot positioner. So in this example, there are two imported tool frames from the connected components. Many times for the tool frame, you only need one, but there may be cases where you need multiple tool frames. For example, in this layout, we have a weld gun on the robot and we are using the first tool frame for that tool component but we also have a second tool for plasma cutting, where the geometry does not match the first tool frame. So we need a second tool frame position here that will match the geometry of the second tool component. So what are the use cases for robot base frames? Usually you attach base frames to certain components in the robot cell 
which the robot needs to move to. In this example, the robot works on the workpiece, and we have one base frame for that. But the robot also needs to work on this pair of tool stands. So in this case, we have a second and third base frame attached to the tool stands. For example, the weld tool uses the first tool stand and base U-frame 1. And when the base is attached to the stand, if we need to modify the position of the stand, we don't need to modify the program for picking the tool on that stand, because the positions move with the base frame that is attached to the component. A base frame is also useful if you need to perform synchronized motions. So in this case we have a weld one routine set to weld on this edge. While the workpiece is moved by the workpiece positioner. And this is synchronized motion that is possible by using a base frame. And in this case, the base frame needs to be attached to the moving workpiece. Or you could set the parent to be the flange node of the workpiece positioner. And now, when the workpiece moves, the robot performs a linear motion in reference to the moving base frame. Another use of base frames is reusing your programs and creating patterns. So here the Weld2 subroutine welds this edge of the workpiece. And in this example, we have another similar feature on the workpiece. So we could reuse the program for the second instance of this stiffener feature. And that we can do by modifying the base frame. So if we do a simple measurement, there's 160 millimeters offset between the similar stiffener features. And what we can do is modify and move the base frame relatively by that amount. And then we can call the Weld2 subroutine again. And what happens then is that the robot welds the first feature and then it moves the base frame 160 millimeters and repeats the same routine to weld the second feature on the workpiece. So this way, utilizing base frames it's easy to create patterns and reuse your programs on another instance. And now, let's talk about robot configurations and joint turns. Configurations are different ways for a robot to reach the same tool position. And an articulated robot has eight of these configurations that you can select from the jog panel. Selecting different configurations shows that the tool stays in place, but the robot pose changes. And sometimes you need to use all of these different configurations in your applications. So let's take a look at this example layout. If we run the simulation, the robot picks up the part and places it under the camera using only one configuration. And this means that in this case, the robot's first axis needs to rotate, causing the wrist to hit the structure of this narrow cell. So what we can do is change the robot motions to use a different configuration to reach the camera location. You can change the configuration on a robot's PTP motions, and all linear motions that follow it will inherit the configuration from the PTP motion above. So in this place position, let's select 
the last PTP motion and change its configuration using the jog panel. And here we want to set the configuration so that the first axis stays close to the zero position. And in this case, this configuration, CFX4, is the one we want to use. So we use the touch up function on the position and with the updated configuration, let's run the program now. Now you see that the robot doesn't turn on this first axis anymore, but axis two and three do most of the work to arrive to this camera position. So we used a different configuration to optimize the robot motion. Joint turns are related to robot configuration in that with a rotational joint, you can have different full rotations programmed to some position. And if we take a closer look at this program, you can see that the robot picks the part and when it approaches, the sixth joint does a full rotation when arriving to the camera position. And this is unnecessary motion that we can fix by modifying the joint turns. So again, let's choose the PTP motion and viewing the jog panel, we see that the last axis value is minus 361. So let's modify and remove one full rotation from that joint using these controls. So now the sixth joint turn was modified and we can use the touch up function again on this position and run the simulation. Now the robot reaches the same position without a full rotation of the last axis. And we modified and optimized this robot motion by modifying the turns of the PTP motion. And this concludes the lesson. Thank you for watching.